what up? This is your boy Fit the Cell. And it's another take of tap, 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 tap in. And we are here again. My boy's back. Let's go. What up, y'all? <sighs> what up, do everybody? It's your favorite host, Bit Breezy. Your favorite. And unique post. Even. I'm gonna, you're right. Go ahead. <laughs> we, they, I don't know why today y'all throwing the word favorite <laughs> around like that. You the one that's favorite <laughs> host. Big M. Not the little one. Here we go. Put Thank some you. respect on her name. You hear? So today, they chose the real favorite host Ooh. to go ahead and, you know, mm. talk about our special. 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 Extra special. Yeah. <laughs> Our special guest, she's a chef. Hey, y'all. She's a coordinator. Yeah. She's a paralegal. Yeah. yeah. Community liaison. Yeah. I normally go by Big M. Who that today, is? I'm going to give her the title. Oh! Thank you for the invite. Thank you, thank you. You ready? Yes, sir. Um, ready as they can be. Yes, sir. This, this going to be a lit episode. Yeah. It's going to be lit. A lit one. So, um, Mama, thank you so much for answering yes to our call. Uh, I've been wanting this interview for a minute because I believe that, you know, um, you have a powerful testimony that can not only help somebody in their current situation, but can give them insight on how to um, get over the hump that they are uh, they are crossing right now. So, with that being said, um, I remember the first time I met you. Do you? Do you? <laughs> oh, I remember. I'm gonna see what you remember. <laughs> the first time I met Mama was so funny, man. So, Mama's brother um, is one of my best friends, man, and. Um, we were just hanging out there. He's like, man, you should come to my house. Right. So he invited me over and, um, you know, somebody opened the door. When she opened the door, the presence was so, so tense. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I fear for my life. <laughs> so, and 20 plus years later, man, and you, you've been a great friend and I just want to say thank you. Thank you. You know, that, that moment that I ain't trying with dog like that. Put some respect on my dog name, all right? I'm going to say the last thing. <laughs> um, so, Mama, share with us. It's been so long. I don't even remember. No? But I just know I thought she was always me. Like, she's nothing to play with, okay? <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember. Me, I don't remember. Right. Don't remember. Yeah, okay. She probably remember me, but I don't. I was legit. I don't remember the first time. You probably met me before I was even born. So really, wow. really, I mean, that, she definitely knew. Me, I think we all knew you, <laughs> Boy, bro. Like, come on now, give it up for the baby of the of right. us tapping. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, he had his bottle before he got here. <laughs> Your story. Uh, what is it? Yeah. My story, um, yeah. it's a, it's a, it's, it's a doozy. Um, once again, I want to say thank you for having me and thank you for allowing me to share this, um, my journey. Um, as I said, it's a doozy. Oh, I was 19. 19. 19. Mm. Um, you know, thinking I'm grown at that time. I think I was doing about two. Three jobs at the time. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> I like my one. <laughs> I can barely do one. I can do all three jobs. <laughs> I was doing three jobs at the time. I was doing McDonald's, Kmart, and um, Miami Subs. It was in the Keys. So I was in the Keys. So, Full time. Well, um, yeah, because I was going from one to another. Um, by that time, I was already out of high school. So, you know... Um, Leading up to my journey, my story is that um, being 19, um, and, and you know, in 2000, everybody think the, you know, the earth is going to end, Jesus is coming back. Right. That's crazy. So right. uh, a group of us was a whole bunch of youth that got baptized around that time. And I said, you know what, let me just jump in, in the line and just get baptized, just to get baptized. Because everybody said, 2000, Jesus is coming. So. I so think. the only reason for the baptism <laughs> was was fear. <laughs> 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 I 
make sure I go. <laughs> if you go, I'm, 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 I'm plunged. <laughs> Here right now, enough. <laughs> Okay. So at the time, that's what the, you know, that's what I decided to do. But even within that, when I made that decision, I was still out in the world. I was still, you know, at that age, 19, going to 20, I was going to the clubs in and out. Um, majority of you who know me, you know, I always get that story, that part is that I used to go to the clubs, they listen to my parents, have my tongue pierced, and still join the <laughs> choir in HBC and, and go from there. So I think I was moving fast in my life, in my lane. Um, and I think God wanted to me to pump my brakes. So um, in February of 2002, I got in a car accident. Um, the car accident, I was heading to work. and um, But something that day told me, don't go. Um, cancel it. Call. And I did. I called plenty of time. Like, say, I'm, I'm going to be late. I'm, the bus is running late. I'll, you know, I missed the bus. So, but this time I was pushing it. But before that, my father had told me, hey, be careful with my car. And Matthew was going to drop me, my brother Matthew, Matthew yeah. was dropping me at the Walmart at the time to go catch the bus to the Keys. So I was on my way to the um, to Walmart. I was driving. I was in the, uh, Matthew was on the passenger side. And um, as I'm arriving to Walmart, I noticed the bus already left the station. So I said, okay, let me deviate, you know, detour to another station, another location. So as I got on New World Swan, which is Lucy Street, I was making a left turn on Lucy Street to go to the next. Um, if you don't know these streets, th these are located in Homestead. Yeah. And I know <laughs> most of you guys don't know what the heck Homestead is, right? It, it's, it's the one you get before the keys, okay? Yeah. Right before. So as I'm heading there, um, the light was, the, the lane for me to turn was clear. I didn't see no vehicles. The light was for me to go green. And as soon as I turned, I hit something. Didn't know what I hit. I panicked. Um, I didn't, I stopped for a minute. And then, um, so I was like, oh, shoot. The first thing that came in my head is my dad. He said, don't, you know. Yeah, be careful with the car. Yeah. with the car. The Haitians in their mouth, bro. So the minute I heard that came in my head, I just went straight home. So I got home and then, um. Now everybody know I did have somebody in the car as I mentioned, my brother, but nobody knew he was part of that at all. Mm. So when I got home, me, me and him trying to figure out a strategy to go tell my dad. So then um, I came up with a story. And then um, so when I told my dad and he was like, okay, you know, this was happening on a Tuesday. So Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, he decided to take the car to a body shop to get repaired. So as he went to the local body shop to get the car repaired. And at the time, police officers were looking for the vehicle because the reason why they was able to locate the vehicle because the bumper to his car was left at the scene. Mm -hmm. So at the scene, so they was going to the local body shop to figure out if anybody has brought the car in. So it happened that day he went, they were there. At the body shop. At the body shop. So let me ask you, prior to that accident, at, at 19... Had you ever had an accident prior to? No, never had. This, an was, this was your first accident. First accident. I know you were scared. Yeah. 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 I've been <laughs> Cause I, like no, no lie. Cause I, I think I, I told you this story before. I, I was seventeen, right? Mm -hmm. And we used to wow out, right? And it's the same thing. You you get this this fear. Mm -hmm. Right of the unknown because you don't know what's gonna happen and you know knowing that you know police officer is gonna be there. But the thing about accident is it's an accident. Right. If we just stay and face the consequences, it might not lead to yeah. much. Much. Yes. Right. Yes. But um, that was not the case. No, that was not the case for me at all. Um, so when they spoke to my father, they asked him, "Hey, um, were you the driver of the vehicle? This vehicle was involved in an accident." He's like, "No." Um. Somebody hit my daughter. Matter of fact, I left the scene because remember I told him. The so that, that's the story you in. You in. Yeah. Shout out to Matt, real quick, man. <laughs> well, how you doing, bro? We that's miss you, crazy. man. Yeah. So you know, this is the story we told my dad. Is somebody hit us and that person left. So he was with the story I gave him. That's what the story that's presented right. to the police officers. So um, as you know, they told him, look, you know, have her come in. Um, you know, we'll take her testimony. And then we may, you know, process her and then you can, you know, um, get a bondsman and get her out the same day. So true enough, I went and um, that's what happened. They processed me. Um, and then 
later on that evening, I got um, released from TGK um, prison, I'm um, in jail. Excuse me. I'm kind of nervous. Um, <laughs> you good, Kurt? You good? So from there, um, that journey started. They started for me to go to, um, to court, in and out of court. And in um, October 15 of 2002, that's when they give me, the, I got a plea. The plea was one year house arrest, followed by seven year probation. Right. Um, at the time, I did not know what those were. I didn't know what those, what that meant. So house arrest to me is like, okay, I'm home. And versus me being in jail. Because the person at the time, the person I hit, um, he, was, he had an amputated leg. He was on a motorcycle. He wanted me to do eight year prison. So from there, that's when I started the whole journey of learning what the law is. Okay. What what did you learn from that experience? Not not let, let's not move forward to what happened afterwards, mm -hmm. but that experience, what did it teach you? Well, at the time to go back to what you said, thinking mm -hmm. back on the whole when you met me with yeah. the ankle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The house <laughs> arrest, um originally I didn't have the ankle monitor. Um, I just, cause at that time we lived, um, on, you were, um, 8th street mm -hmm. checkers. You guys know checkers 8th street. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the house right there in the corner, that's where we used to live right across from checkers. So I decided to go to the grocery store, um, to go get stuff. And I was supposed to let my PO know I was leaving to go to the store. Can, can you please elaborate to the people in the back what a PO is? It's a probation officer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a probation <laughs> officer. Um, she came and she arrived to my house. I wasn't home. So then that was a violation of probation. Um, and um, to move forward, when my parents bought the house where my dad is currently at, was in March um, March 11th of whole, um, twenty of 03. That's when he bought the house. And um, we moved. That day I was moving into that house. But that day I knew I was going to get violated. I was going to go to jail. Um, I had a feeling. Because when when I when she violated me it was back in November, and I did not remember it's November. Then all the way in March of '03, that's when she decided she wanted me to go in to to get arrested. So that's when I went to court. I spent two months and a half in jail, and when I got out, I got out with the ankle monitor. So when I met Samuel, yes, Samuel, I met her with that. Samuel met me with the ankle <laughs> monitor. So he opened, when I opened the door, and I looked at Samuel, I closed the door, and I went back yeah, inside. Yeah, she, 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 my mom was just calling me the other day. Boy, oh, I gotta be home at this time. Right. <laughs> it, it was nice in your house. Okay, I know where you live. I ain't going back. <laughs> That's so, crazy. But but your journey didn't didn't end there, right? It didn't. It didn't. It didn't. Um, wow. It started because right after I got out of jail, um, it was a different perspective, a different um, view of life, and the view of you know, I can go into my mom in this part um, because when I was in jail for two months and a half, mm. she was the prayer warrior for me. And our parents teach us the word, they teach us to pray, but we don't take it serious until when you're in a situation. When life hits you. Mm -hmm. And then that's when you remember what they taught you. And so yep. when I was in jail, Psalms 23 was my, that became my best friend because they taught it to me in Creole. I didn't want to pick it up. I didn't want to listen to it. But when I was in jail, mm -hmm. I learned it by force because that was my, that two months and a half, I only fast. I didn't want to eat what they were having. I didn't want to be around because you were in the cell with a bunch of women. We have like 30 plus women in the cell, bathroom, shower. So everybody see what you're doing. So um, being, knowing that my mom, the first time she came to see me, I told her, this is not my home. Do not come back here. Don't come visit me. That was not my home. So we just pray, stayed in prayer. And I learned to pray and depend because I didn't want... It taught me to depend on God, not on people or my mom at that amen. time. Because yeah. she was doing her things. Yeah, amen. Um, man, mama, at 19, uh, to be going through this, I can only imagine how tough it was on you. Yeah. But what impact did it have on your environment and your peers how, how was that treatment oh so we go back to the ankle monitor mm -hmm. um yeah. when i had the ankle monitor as a youth as a, a youth in the community and my parents are my mom was uh you know prayer prayer warrior mm -hmm. and my dad is a deacon of the church 
and to know that their oldest daughter, um, you know, got in trouble with the law. And then people look at you based on, hey, you made a mistake. Yeah. You're not. To, to me at the time, I was broken. I was not worthy. I was not good enough because I made a mistake. Because all people see once you walk in, anywhere you go, it was that ankle monitor. Yeah, mm-hmm. I not only just had the monitor, I had a box with me. Also, to carry like a little purse. So, because they had to keep track of me at all times, where I went. So, that for me, it in my life, it just, you start to see who who's there for you and who's not. Definitely. And at that time, for me, it was my mom, my family, who was there for me. Yeah. I know people looking at you upside down with that, how that thick getting, box on your ankle. How was it Sheesh. going from jail to back to society? Like, how was that? It was for tough. Real? Because and because when you for me I after that I um I had to go start looking for work, um because they had given me a sentence I had a, a restitution fee to pay every month a hundred dollars I had to pay a restitution of twenty thousand dollars so every month I have to come up with a hundred dollars to pay back to this victim, um so going back to society people when you start filling the application for work you have to re- put that on the you you, know, mm-hmm. you was involved in the incident this is what's going on so some people won't not hire you. Um, based on your past, and people will look at you because you made a mistake. You're not, um, how you say, it? you're not able to re- um, start over. You're yeah. not able to yeah, um, get it. back on your feet. So it was kind of hard to see that because even friends you I had at the time didn't really understand what I was going through and what was happening. It just know okay, she got in a car accident. She shouldn't have to see, but it was. Bigger and greater than that. It was just not just an accident. People just assume it. Yeah. Yeah. Just, so. yeah. So, I know. Oh. Yeah, so I thought, uh-huh. No, I just know like, like you know, human beings. And I, I've learned that as growing up, you know, like people, people love to like, you know, assume things and people love to just like create a narrative in their heads and just run with it. So like, I know like you went, I know you went through a lot because I know a lot of people would try to, would try to just say a whole bunch of Crazy, crazy, crazy stuff crazy and discredit crazy. and don't know nothing. Yeah, because a lot of people like to speak from a from a point from a place of ignorance. I think like, we sit here yeah. we sit here on this podcast. Like when you're in the church, the church is the most gossipy place that you could be. You know? in, so for sure. once they hear a story, they run with it and they yeah. talk about what they know, what they, they don't know, what they and saw, what they what assume, they what they didn't see. <laughs> right, and the story turned into chaos. Was it hard to get back in church? It was hard. Um, definitely, that was hard to get back into church because um, a lot of people did not understand. And because you made a mistake, they judge you based on your mistake. There's no room for redemption. Yeah. At the time for me, in my life, that was not a an option. Wow. Um, because I had one pastor. Um, he believed in me. At the time, he wasn't at the pastor. He was just, a, you know... A Sunday school teacher, mm-hmm. and um, he was the only one who believed in me at the time for me to be able to teach Sunday school to be his assistant. Mm-hmm. Because there was another pastor; he's no longer with us. Had mentioned said that she's not able; she 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 can't teach Sunday school. She don't have nothing to offer. Oh wow! Sunday wow. school, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah. So for then I had other people. You know that one pastor now. Um, I'm gonna always have gratitude towards him because he, he looked, showed grace. He showed grace and he looked past my the situation <clears throat> and to be able to wow. teach Sunday school and then for me to still as today still teach Sunday school and to be able to bring that because I was able to share my testimony during that time not knowing the impact it would have on other people's yeah. lives. The Bible tells you, you know, you will know them by their fruits. Mm. So like it shows you that you know Though God is a God of many wonders and can do whatever he wants, you know, whether speak in a divine way or act in a divine way, he can also set people around you to perform right. what he would do, you know, to, to act like what he would tell you to do or act like um, what he would show, you know. So, like, I find that very amazing to hear because in the midst of that, you know, people can see that and be like, there is no God you right. know, at the end of the day. You could, so you could turn people away from the love of God. And, and it's crazy, though. As people who do read the book, you know, who read the Bible. The Bible. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, it's still a book. Anyways, <laughs> anyways. Huh. But like, you know, as people who who's pastors and leaders of, you know, who would you expect more to 
know more about this word, you would expect more of the grace. You would expect more of like the love from them because the Bible is filled with people who's been who's well, done yeah. worse than yeah. what you do, which worse than what you did, you know? Because yeah. what you did was probably the tip of the iceberg than what somebody else was doing in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And yeah. but still they were still able to show you grace. Like I admire that for I, sure. I admire that. That's, I think, yeah. yeah. No, I was gonna say I think once you mentioned something about how you depend on God, because I feel like some of us don't understand like the impact of having a good relationship with God, which right. is between you and God. So I was thinking, because it's like, in that moment before, you know, you had the accident, you just wanted to go and baptize because you wanted to be with your friend, you know, <laughs> if that come, I'm going to save. But how was it when you were in that season where you're like, your friends were not with you and your family was with you, but I know you probably feel guilty. You probably feel like everything, you know, because people was talking. Your dad was a dickhead and you know they're going to talk. How was it in that season were you able to hear God's voice or was it just like a you knocking and you didn't find no answer at that time? To me, at, at that time, um, like you just said, um, being the oldest, I'm the only oldest girl among these young men. Um, and my brothers, I'm the oldest and my mom was so hard strict. on me, strict on me on doing certain things, certain way as a young lady. So then to see that her firstborn, her first daughter, her only daughter, got in this situation. And then of course you have the world, you have people, you have the church, you have the looking at, okay, this is a deacon's or a deacon's daughter. And it is in a situation like that. So then of course my mom was more towards, yeah, this happened, but I'm going to God because mm. God gave me you, Yeah, you know, yeah. and based on my history, my mom, it was tough. It was tough. Because as a older, it was tough. And then to see other people, to, see, to and even with that, also too, I was not back into church fully fully either. Mm -hmm. I was not bad because you, I you still had some itch. I still My dog was still out there. <laughs> I was not fully back, but at the same time, because you, you made the mistake, you this is happening, and you want to go back to what you want to call home. And even during me coming back to the church after the situation and people that you know that was said that was there for me or however but my journey was my journey it was yes. not nobody else's journey let's go so i think we could segue into this right so you talk about the situation the incident um how did that impact your spiritual life Ooh. my spiritual life at that time cuz when i was in i can go back into when i was there for 2 months Ladies, you have women that was like they call them butch, manly women, brave combat corn roll. Dykes. <laughs> Dykes. Yeah. I didn't know what it is. I didn't know what that was. So um when I see that um when I was there to see how different people view, like I came in, the people that I came in with, that came in that day, they left and came back. I said, let's let me go home one time. And I ain't coming back. And that was the case. But in there, it, it, it taught me, like I said, to go back and to seek in him. And then when I did come out, and then you see how the world treats you based on your mistake, it kind of brought me a little back, saying a little reserved, didn't want to be involved in certain things. Mm -hmm. Did not feel I was good enough to be part of, you know, church or leadership or leadership activities. Because it took a long, long time. If Sammy remember, mm. it took me a long time to mm. become a certain, either to be a youth president or be a, a, a activity director in my youth, because it took a long time. Yeah, because forgiveness, <clears throat> forgiveness as human is, is difficult to obtain uh, because we look at the flaw, we look at the mistake, yeah. and we don't apply grace when necessary. Right. Right. So we make that per person suffer. Um, when God already forgive them, we're still holding them to what they did that was wrong. <clears throat> One thing that drew me closest to you, I, like me and my mom have been friends forever. And she is one of the most trusted friends that I, that, that I, I have. And the thing about her, she's a loyal friend, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and you know that I, like me and you went through many battles together <laughs> and I, I don't play about you. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and the reason being is because Ooh, in tough times, like you, you are one of those friends that always show up. 
you know, in good times, you are one of the friends that showed up. Um, I remember me getting married, like I just placed everything in your hand. I said, you do whatever you want. Me and my wife trusted you with everything about our wedding. And and you came through for us many, many times, you know, prior to. Uh, so it's hard to find friends like you. Um, and I met you in the most, in, in your most vulnerable time, right? Where um, you could have called it broken. You could have called it um, uh, separated from your peers because of the judgment that was placed on you. And yet your personality and the the, 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 the Christ that I saw in you drew me closer to you. Um, so how did you overcome all the negative, uh, feedback that was coming your way? And how did you make that shift to take God serious? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> that's a good question. Um, good question. Um, for me, Sam, she's no longer with me, but she's still with me. My mom. My mom is my, was my rock. And, um, it's okay. She taught me. To trust and rely on God. Why? Because as her as a woman of a, a prayer warrior, she was going through her trials and tribulations. And she taught that we cannot rely on men. We cannot rely on people. Because they're going to always let you down. Yeah. So for me, I always look at she always te- She always tell us that. Whatever you're doing for God, you're doing for God 100%. Don't do it for men. If you rely on men to do something, you will never get it done. So in my journey and going to my journey, I had to find, seek him first, seek God, seek his presence. Because as you mentioned, Sam, you and I and the youth in general and things that we have been through in our own personal life. And there's things that have happened that we have, we question. Yeah. Is he really there? Is he there for us? Is he does he see what's going on? But in the midst of all that, I go back to what my mom always say: trust in God. No matter what is happening, what no matter what storm you're going through, you have to trust in God. So in that journey, that it allowed me, and every youth who knew me back then used to call me the Beast. Mm. I I hated that name. <laughs> the Beast. No. I used to hate that name, but I, I hated I, the name. When I'm speaking, I was speaking very aggressive. Yeah. I was I was angry. Um it's like I'm trying to do good and then you pushing me back to the old me. Mm-hmm. As I'm taking a step forward, I'm going back because I'm hearing the word be. So I had to change that narrative. Yeah. Because I'm not an animal. I'm a person. And it's a young lady that's growing up that's trying to be a woman in the in the society. So I had to like Figure out like God, what is what's wrong with me? Is it something that I need to work on? So by me going in within and talking to my father and having that relationship, I started to figure out. And then of course God started putting people, great people around me, so to be able to see the best in who Marlene is. And like Sam mentioned, I have Sam, his wife, I have a whole lot of people I can mention, Pastor Reggie, I can mention a lot of people, my Makome, your mom. You know, there's yeah. a people that's been around me that was able to accept me for who I am and allow me to grow to be the person that I am today. And then also that's with God, putting those people around me and then for me to be who I am. Because now if I was, if I didn't have those people around me, grounded my family, my brothers, I wouldn't be the person I am today. I would still be the bitter, angry, thinking that, you know, everybody hate me. Because at one point I felt that I, I didn't deserve to be in this world. Mm-hmm. Because of I'm trying, but I'm being pulled back. I'm trying and being pulled back. But by the grace of God, He placed my circle of friends around me to be help me to be the person that I am. 
Uh, the importance uh, of did people this story, surrounding you. Did this journey have a happy ending? Woo! Did it? <laughs> <laughs> it did. It but did. before you get to that, though, I want to go back to your mom. Your mom was an anchor in, in our church. Um, your mom loved the youth a lot. I remember, I remember your mom's prayers, man. When I ever, whenever I go to this lady's house, like before we we eat, she got lay hands, you know. <laughs> and she was so genuine when it comes to spirituality. She wanted to see everybody's growth. I, I remember her prayers over my life. I remember what she told me, you know, one day at your house, right? That this this lady um, really told me you know, who God called me to be, right. you know, and God revealed that to her. And I, I always appreciate that about her because I think it made me, you know, stronger in my faith. Um, so talk a little bit about, you know, who your mom was and, 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 you know, how did she impact the community that, that she, she was in? Malen Marie Moplesi Dodoy. Oh, that's a lot of names. That's crazy. The fool. Hey, that's an Asian for sure. Middle name, middle last name, and all, bro. It's oh, crazy. Um, Talk came about a long her way, a bit. Sam. Our yeah. mom came a long way in her journey. Um, she is not longer with us, but um, I can share this. Um, she came a long way. Yeah. But somebody came from Haiti to Bahamas, mm -hmm. and in the journey of coming from Haiti to Bahamas, she she went through it. Um, it coming here to to United States of America and and trying to build come of the three of us at the time was me, Matthew, and Willie. And when she came here, she didn't play about her God. No, she, she didn't play about her God. Uh, she did. And she, she, she don't care what you was doing, what yeah. you was not doing. She, she, go, she go to war with the best of them. <laughs> you couldn't even talk to <laughs> that. <laughs> you couldn't even be in the bathroom too long, <laughs> bro. She couldn't find you, bro. She could It's been a minute. My what got it? What did you do? You talking. You talking. So, yes. That... Ligli's was not, she don't play with. Jen, um, I remember. Cree de Minuit. Cree de Minuit, Jen yeah. de, Samedi, Saturday prayer. I remember Saturdays when it first. Um, Tuesday mornings. Tuesday mornings. Yeah. So Saturdays, she used to have, when I remember growing up, she used to have in the chapel, she used to have, make sure everybody bring a, a white sheet, make sure the, the whole chapel is covered in white. Prier. And from nine to noon. And then on Tuesdays, that's where her thing. Yeah, and she did. started the Tuesday prayer. Actually, she started the Tuesday prayers, and she started the um, the um, actually the the prayer um, fasting prayer on Saturday. Yeah, there was that was her, and my dad, and then they came into the um, Tuesday prayer, and then they came up with they had a committee. They formed the committee. They had the nine one one prayer. That's I remember nine one one prayer. <laughs> they had nine one one prayer. That prayer line got me out of a lot of things. What? I hate obsessing to this way. Put me in that nine one one. I got a 911. So the 911 prayer, and then uh, then we have the Friday night prayer. So prayer was think that was her big thing at the yeah. house. Big thing for her. That was her. And then when it comes to like you said, and she always said it to parents. And then you guys remember you do pam pray for your pray for your kids. Nobody's gonna pray for your kids. She was big on that. She was, and then if you're doing it wrong, she don't like it. Trust and believe she's gonna she tell, you. tell you. She don't like it. That lady was so vocal. So it's, it's very vocal. And, you know, along her, like I said before, in her journey, in her walk, it wasn't easy because a lot of people felt that the way she expressed herself, that either she was rude, um, she was out of place, but she didn't care. As long as she knows that she's telling you it and it's coming from a genuine place, the journey, you know, her is her, from her heart because she cares and she loves it. I think that's where I get that whole caring for people because that's she was given that a lot. She didn't. She may not have, but whatever she had, she was gonna so give it to you. Yeah. Um. On her last day, when we, you know, when when everybody heard that, you know, she was not gonna longer be with us, it, it just to see how many, how much people showed up for her. Um, Marjorie. Big. She <laughs> big up today. So right now you Marjorie. You're Marjorie today, Mel. <laughs> oh sorry, big M. Um that was her that was you know they they did they always bumping him. Bumping that, was, that was her 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 mom. And you know what's crazy? I, my mom always brings us up to this day. 
I never go see nobody in the hospital. My mom had surgery. I didn't go. I never seen no. The only person I ever seen in the hospital was her mom. I stayed there. Never. Jeez. So, um, and you, and you, that's how you could see it in her journey and how she was and prayed and cared for people. But you saw her on her last day when we, we celebrate her life to see how many people really showed up for her. Showed up for her. Yeah, I think and you. Your mom's story, like in a short period of time, she was able to impact so many mm-hmm. people, you know, and um, positively, you know what I mean? Uh, we took all the bad that, that came with it, mm-hmm. and, but... <laughs> but the, eyes, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I took all of it and, and man, like the, the memories that I have of her, it, it is so comforting. You know, to know that we had somebody like that at our church that was such an anchor, you know, for us spiritually. Um, so now your your journey didn't stop there. No. It right. Didn't. And, and your, your, your the, the mountains that you were climbing got a little bit taller. Uh, you want to get to that a little bit? Um, <clears throat> so after mom. OK, before mom, I was, um, you know, I was like, man, you know, now I'm, I'm getting better. I was um, vice president with um, and you, Samuel. You, we were doing it, boy. <laughs> we are NOC youth, boy. No other choice youth ministry. We were it. Which was the best? We we okay. were it. You, you That's know, the best story. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. No, no, no. We were it. We were it. I'm going to have to agree with that. We were it, boy. Was it? Man. That was the not one. Your agent. Not your agent. Nah. I remember that one youth conference. Yeah. That, <laughs> that one, that one, that one youth conference. Mm. I remember. <laughs> Which one? No other choice. No other choice. Was I remember one. that one. That thing was fine. I have oh, no other choice but to try. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all put me on. Y'all put me on. Boy. Hey, you're tired. Don't sue us. I believe. I believe. <laughs> Okay, you was two years old. <laughs> I remember it. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, so coming through that, you know, then you started trying to put yourself into leadership um, roles. As like I said, I was um, VP to Sam, and then I became Mr. President. Um, we had, by the time, we had great people around us. But mm-hmm. even with that being a leader, you, people still see, you still see that, that, that stigma. They see that yep. stain. They see that, they see that, that stain. Uh, and the person, they don't think you could be better yeah. than that. So from that, from that journey, from that, um, I still pushed on. I still um, pushed through um, my journey. Um, I believe it was in two thousand and ten. We were supposed to go to. We're, we were to supposed to go. Okay, so we used to go to mission trips every. Yeah. I think every two years. Right. Right. So we'll, we'll pick. We'll, we'll pick. We'll, we'll we'll choose like a town in Haiti. To where they they were in need of maybe supplies, medical supplies. Uh, kids were not going to school. Didn't have clothing. So we'll do a container, right, of stuff, right, and then we'll go to Dude. Haiti, like, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll go to Haiti to those remote places. And then not only will we share the gospel, but we also brought goods with us so that we could share with the people that was around. Oh. So 2010, yes. Mama was supposed to make that trip with us. I was, but. we, you know, decided we're trying to get, get, get going. And then, yeah. um, in 2013, as they planned Pastor Pase Estenio. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He had came down. Um, there was a group that went already for the, I think it was the earthquake we had. It was, it was the earthquake. Yeah. So 2011, 12, mm-hmm. and we decided in 2013, we wanted to go to mission. I said, man, you know, like it's going to be, let me, let me go. So I decided to try to get a, my, my passport renewed. And at the time I had a Haitian passport. So, um, I went to where I need to get it done and renewed and whatnot. So it was giving a hard time. So I was like, you know what? I've been, Part of, I had my green card, my residence card for about 10 years. So it's time for me to just become a citizen. Yeah. And um, I said, why not? You know, I talked to my, my parents and I told them about it. My mom said, yes, of course, go ahead and do it. So when I went ahead and, you know, apply, so I went ahead and renew, um, I went into the application for the citizenship. So, no, excuse me, for, yeah, for the citizenship. At first I had to renew my residence card. And then I said, um, 
let me go ahead and apply for the, the res, um, citizenship. So when I did that, I did both at the same time. So I did my residence and I did my citizenship. So while I'm in the process of doing that, um, and I said, okay, great. You know, once not, once I get, I pass it, I, 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 I get my passport. So we had a meeting and we were just going over details of things that we, you know, preparing for Haiti. Mm -hmm. And then in March of that year, um, actually leading up to 2014, 14. 14, I received a letter stating you're in the process of being deported. Mm -hmm. wow. Like, So you go from trying to renew uh, a resident card, Not a job. Take you applying out. for citizenship, citizenship, to being told that you are in the process of okay. deportation. Wow. But going well, Bahamas or Haiti? At this time, at this, this point, they say Haiti. Sheesh. And, and have you have you ever been to Haiti since? I don't know what Haiti looked like. <laughs> but you too. That's why. Wow. You know how crazy that is, man? Like going to like a place that you never been and never experienced. Yeah. So from that point, um, when I received that, so I start, you know, talking to your attorneys. And a lot of them say you should have never opened that can of worm. You should have mm. left it alone. You shouldn't have been. You shouldn't have been pursued it. Now you open a can of worm. You don't know. It, it's there's nothing they can do. So 2014, 2015, um, I received my resident card. Hey, you're being approved for your residence card. So I said, okay, they give me my resident card for another ten years, but they give me a promise for my citizenship. So, um, from, so, you know, talking to attorneys and I put it on a, a standstill, um, uh, cause it started to bother me. It started to, now it's making me in that point, you're like, man, how can you move on with your life? Cause now you're in the deportation process. You never know what's going to happen. So like, you know, going to school or doing anything. So at the time, that's like, I went and I said, okay, let me try to do something. Let me try to do something with myself. And um, so before, right that time, right around time, I said, okay, let me go let me go to school for my paralegal at the time. So mm -hmm. I was working for a firm in 2005. So that whole time I was there, I was not an actual paralegal at the time, but I was just there as a, a regular secretary. Yeah. But to get to what I'm saying is that there's a lot of things that started, that's when I'm starting to know about what the law, the, law. the law has to, you know, how me and things, certain things can happen. So then in 2015, um, 16, um, but to get back a little bit, 2013, during that time, that's when we found my mom had kidney failure. Wow. Mm. In 2013, she had kidney failure. And then throughout that time, we, you know, just trying to figure out how she is, how to make her stable. And me being a caregiver, making sure she's good and stuff like that. So um, I didn't hear anything about my immigration situation. It, it came, it died down. Um, so I had put a pump, I put a brakes on the, the immigration attorney. So I didn't see the attorney. I had one, but I didn't move in because they wanted to use my mom as my um, reference, as the person that she's my, I'm her caregiver. If anything happens, if I leave, you know, this is how she would affect her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then, um, 2016, again, 2017, that's when I lost my mom. Um, I lost my mom in 2017, and then we buried her in August 5th of 2017. And literally a week after, I got the letter saying, you have a final hearing. For wow. deportation. For deportation. Wow. So remember, 2015 wow. was at a standstill, nothing. 2017, right after she passed, that's when I got the letter. Wow. Like, you can only imagine. There's levels to this, right? There are some people that cannot handle, let's say, you fell in a class. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. we know. <laughs> we know. Mm -hmm. Right? And there's people that can't handle... Like may, maybe like their phone bill not being paid and you know now they don't have a cell phone. To, Thank God, right? Yep. Thank yep. God for my parents. Yeah, the plan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but with your situation, it was big girl stuff after big girl stuff after big girl stuff. Yes. Right. It was not you know as a nineteen year old, 
you experience what adults were experiencing. Right. And and later on, you experience what a older adult was experiencing with your mom. And then now you have to face this. Like, how did all that weigh on you? <clears throat> um, just lost my one of my best friends. Yeah, I was my prayer warrior. She was the one who was my cheerleader. And then to now, just to look at it, I was angry. I was angry. Um, I held everybody who knew me. They saw I, 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 I had that mask on. Your guard. That guard up. I was moving, but I was dying. Mm. I was dying inside. Because now I said, God, you took the one person that was, there for that was there for me that can, that was, that's my lifeline. And you took her. So now I get this paper saying that I got to go where I'm going to go, yeah. who I'm going to go to. So leading up, I was angry. Mm -hmm. Even though I was still doing what I'm doing, part of me was angry, angry. Now, you know, after burying your mom and a week later receiving this letter, how did the letter stop your grieving process? Because I know a, after burying your mom a week later, you still grieving. You know, honestly, you know when I, when I grieve my mom, if I'm going to tell you the honest truth, I grieved my mom April 7th, April 7th of 2000, to, um, 2023. Damn, that, that, shout out to the date memories. That's great. The date memories? Yeah, shout out to that. <laughs> That's big. Memories. But... I know what that date means to you. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that date. But, you know, before we continue, there's one thing that you said, because it's like, I'm a, God knows I'm a crybaby for anything. Like, if something is not working, I go to God, like, why is not working? But then, you know. All right, Joe. <laughs> but then listening to your story, it's just like, I feel like sometimes when I'm in a season and I don't, I don't hear God, I was like, God is not with me. But when I was listening to your story, and I see how, in the midst of all of that, I see how God was preparing you, like the in-between blessings. Because like, yes, you had an accident, but then your relationship with God was like on and off. But it's like, okay, God give you that moment where you can go and seek him and depend on him. Yes, you had a problem where it's like your mom was sick, your mom passed away, all of this. But in the moment, God was preparing you to know the law. God was like I'm like now it made me understand because I feel like at times the moment something is not going always like God is not with us while He's working so we don't see the things that He's doing but being it when you said this it just kind of opened my eyes more to understand like certain season God is always there even though we don't see Him He's just working on silence because you know I'm going through that situation you have your mom that's sick. And you have to be able to leave work, go to the hospital, sleep at the hospital, come home, go to work, come back, deal with fellowship, deal with the church, deal with Sunday school, then you keep on moving. Um, I never got allowed myself to, I just kept on moving. I think that me stopping, I, I couldn't stop. I had to keep on moving um, because I saw how my mom was. She didn't let situation stop her from living her life. But at the same time, is to go back, to say that, I'm not going to sit here and say, man, I'm great. I broke it because of as course. a young woman, and to go back to that as a, a young woman, a single <clears throat> woman, don't have no kids, no husband, no, no nobody, and then you see that you have a, your mom and you got to take care of, but at the same time, you do it for them, but you don't have nobody to turn to. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So then my only person that could turn to was God. To talk to him, for him to give me that comfort, to give me that, to make me understand what's going on in my life and how I'm supposed to handle it, how I'm supposed to deal with it. So it's 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 tough. And how how long did you deal with the <clears throat> immigration issue? So we're going from two thousand and when I got the letter of de deportation was in two thousand thirteen. Mm -hmm. Um, so 2013 up to 2023. Wow. Okay. So let, let's, let's get to it then. How, how did we get here? Because this is your testimony. 
Okay. How did we get here? Um, so, 2017, as I mentioned, um, I had, um, after my mom passed away, I seek an attorney. So I finally say, okay, you know what? I have to get this lady because I've, I hired her. I talked to her several times and finally I just decided to go with this attorney. So, um, when I went, decided to sign the papers and she started getting things going for me and she's telling me, Hey, this is what you're going to need papers, witnesses, um, character witnesses and stuff like that. So in the process of me um, seeking the attorney, we went to court a couple of times. We have, um, you know, things that when I go to court, they tell me, okay, it's a continuance. You know, don't worry about this. And then she was telling me that my, you know, at the time they call it um, my crime for immigration, according to the attorney I had at the time, she said it was a crime of moral turpitude. So um, me leaving and then, you know, into cursing, at the scene of the accident, the person had a, 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 a you know, an amputated leg. So that to them, she felt that that was a, a big crime for immigration to have process to remove me out of the out of country, out of the United States. So I took her word because she was my attorney. She was in immigration. Okay. My law was personal injury workers comp, and her law was you know immigration. So I didn't know I had too much knowledge of immigration. So I only took what she fed me. So then 2017, 2018, um, it, and then my last visit in um, November of 2019, I'm sorry, yeah, 2019, um, I had an interview to go to court. I was dressed up, ready. My attorney showed up. She looked like she just rolled out of the bed. Wow. Wow. And so when she arrived, all I heard is was, judge, we asked her for a continuance. But I provided you everything, so I don't understand what the continuance for. And we had I had to pay for um like a um application to re, to renew like um adjustment of status. That's what they called it. So for for the green card, you have to adjust your your status, and so I had to pay money and stuff like that to her. So Matthew, my brother, my younger brother was with me, and then another friend was with me. So we, you know, went to sit down with her and asked her what what just happened. I don't understand. She said, no, the judge asked for the continuance. I said, no, I heard you asked for a continuance, not the right. judge. So she's like, well, no, the other side's not ready, blah, blah, blah. So I took her, her word as face value. But I'm going to tell you guys, honestly, COVID came and it had a lot of sadness to it. A lot of people passed away during COVID. But COVID was my saving grace. Because if I would have gone to court the, in 2000. In 2020, if I would have went, I that court date, I think I would have been in Haiti. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Haiti. <clears throat> I was going to be in Haiti. I mean, from, from what I was hearing from all this, you know, I see so many opportunities where you could have lost your faith. I see so many opportunities uh -huh. where... You could have lost your mind. Lost your, lost your mind. mind. <laughs> go crazy. Like, bro, like, it could have been the done deal for you. But, like, damn, man, God is good. I tell you, boy. God is good. Like, I don't know. You like you can't even speak on that, bro. Like, cause you see, I'm quiet. For real, you can't. <laughs> you can't. You can't I'm speak on yeah, that, bro. Like, anybody could go through that. I promise you would like crumble. Yeah. And, and for some reason, I don't know, maybe like I'm ODing it, but like in my in my from from my understanding, like you can see that as like the devil's trying to work. Yeah. The devil's trying to put things in your way, man. Yeah. So you can literally turn away. Like, you know, with your mom with the sickness, and then right after the death, boom, immigration. And like it was like another thing after another after another, like you didn't have a break type of thing. And even at the time you had a break, something happened. Like you can see that as like as another obstacle or as the devil trying to come at hard because he knows for some reason, I believe the devil doesn't have the power of God to understand the future and understand, um, like know what's in store for you. But he has the understanding he's, to know. He's extremely limited. Yeah, he, but he has the understanding and the intelligence to know what like you're capable break, of. Break you. yeah. yeah. So it's like to hear all of that. Sheesh. Yeah. And I wow. think while you're saying this, this comes to mind, right? Let me see if I could phrase it right. 
we could all go through a test, but not all of us come out the other side with a testimony. Yeah. Test you, testimony. You know? Put that on the shirt. <laughs> Put it on the t-shirt. Oh. Tap, 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 tap in. Yes, sir. You know, that's you good. Know, <laughs> like sometimes, you know, some people go to their test and they give up in the yeah. middle of the test. Right. And that's how we have suicidal, you know, um, rate going up here and there. You know, this was enough. You, you spoke about, you know, where at the time you, you thought about it. Right. Yeah. Uh, because of all the things that you were going through. But thank God you didn't go through it because oh, no, I couldn't go through it because that voice of Mari Malik Mokrizi mm-hmm. was not going to go nowhere. Because <laughs> the day I decided to do that, that lady said, put that thing down. Sure. I put it down because I was in the kitchen. I, I I just had an argument with my father, and then so I decided, okay, this is it. She's gone. What's the purpose of me here? I was my purpose was to me. I felt that it was just for her. Um, I was you know I was there just because of her. And then to then that day I decided, okay, it's done now. And then all I heard it was. Like I hear that she was just standing right there. And her room, her thing was when she's home, when she was home, she would pray in all the house. To chum you. Yeah. She would go in the house. So everywhere you felt her presence. So that day when she told me, Mitik Kutuala, then I look around, I was the only one in the house. I was the only one in the house. Because my dad had just left. And so, yes, it, it takes a lot. Saving grace, man. Dude, can you finish the story? I'm, I'm locked in. <laughs> you like locked in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. real quick. Translate the uh, you know, knife. Yeah. Sorry, put, knife. Put, the, put, the knife. put the knife down. Put yeah. Knife down. Yeah. <laughs> for, my, for my English speakers. For my English speakers. <laughs> <laughs> you see your number, your favorite host, he, he got you. Oh, yeah, 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 Anybody need it in Spanish? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Translate that. <laughs> um, so, you mentioned a day. Yeah. Let's let's get to that. Let's day get to now. that day. Let's get to that day. Let's so, get to that day now. So, um, as I stated in twenty twenty, that's when pandemic hit. Um, so everything was at a standstill, and by being in the standstill, so um, twenty one came around, and I had a you know friend that wanted an attorney. I referred him to my previous attorney, and um, you know because I thought she was legit. She was good, you know, based on. Her knowledge of the law was like phenomenal. It was there. Yeah. It was there. Um, so one of, in 2021, um, 22, one of my friends, the one I had referred her to, called me and said, Hey, look, you know, I I provided the attorney with um my change of address and something told me just call immigration and noticed that, you know, and then when I did call immigration, immigration said they had sent me my my work permit card. And I had an interview, uh, but the attorney never changed my address. Wow. I was like, no, man, she wouldn't do that. I say, you know, why would she, why not? Cause I'm the one who, we both provided that information, so I know she has it. So didn't understand why she didn't ever provide it to immigration. So after that, I'm calling and calling, calling her. And I was like, man, I hope this lady didn't pass away during the pandemic because she's not answering my phone calls. This is not like her. And then finally, one day, somebody say, give her a call right now. So I called her. When I called her, the lady didn't know who I was. Oh, no. I said, Miss Ethan, this is Miss Dodoy. I'm Marlene Dodoy. Oh, Miss Dodoy, how you doing? And she gave me, a, she, at the time she told me she, you know, she was diagnosed with cancer. In my head, I said, this lady right here lying as hell. I'm <laughs> <laughs> get my money. No, no her track records. <laughs> so I said, this lady's lying. This is lying. And I'm like... And she now she's pretending like she don't know who I am. This don't make no sense. So then now my mind is peg mode. Yeah. It's okay. Now is this lady I guess she don't she did this and I don't want to take any risk. And she said she's gonna die. Don't know when. I don't want to take the risk of my freedom. So then of course I seek another attorney. And then when I seek the the other attorney, and she looked up my case and look at look up my attorney at the time. And my attorney was disbarred. Well, oh, she never had cancer. <laughs> wait, wait. Oh, Keep that God. Wait, wait. <laughs> 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 so 
I found out that she was this bar. She was not supposed to be practicing any type of law, mm-hmm. and she was supposed to notify her clients that the you know she was disbarred. She could not practice. So I never received a letter from her stating that she she can't practice anymore. My God. So then I now I have to pay, um get a new attorney, pay for a new attorney. So that attorney that I hired, um she she was on top of it. But at the time when I seeked her, she was expecting. So we had to put things on stand on a, on a, a back, back burner. So then. So this is 2022. Then um, 2022, that's when me and her start working. So I got a call in November of 2022 stating, hey, we have to go to court. I said, we just started. What do we do? <laughs> <laughs> Your know. last process was not this fast. <laughs> I, I got you. So, you know, because it was, we just started. I don't know what, you know, what we need, what we're going to present. I said, well, hey, if you got a date, then let's, let's go. go. So I went, and my attorney was telling me, hey, um, we may need your dad. I said, my dad? I said, no, we ain't doing that. Mm. So um, then she was like, there's a possibility they might call him because, you know, he's he's older, he's sick, he, they might need him. I said, I don't think we're going to need my dad, so let's go. So we went. So that was November 15th of 2022. And... Um, When I got to there, when I got to to the courthouse, it was just me and the, my attorney. When I sat there, was in it for about two hours. The judge looked at me and said, "If we continue this process today, the outcome won't be good for her." Wow. So, wow. So I was like, I look at my attorney. I like, what you mean? Mm. She she told me that I said, okay. The judge said, I'm gonna give you guys thirty days to provide. Everything that you need to provide and what we can leave. She said, this case has been going too long. We need to come with a decision. So then from November, sorry, November 16 to December 16, I have 30 days to provide everything I can think of to support my case to, to tell them the reason to stay. So imagine I have to do, it's like somebody that just came into the United States. Don't know nothing about the United States. That's what that was me. I was a just come. Uh, for those who don't know what that term <laughs> means, <laughs> that's crazy. When you just come from Haiti, you're no, just come. The name is changed now. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 <laughs> Biden, you know, you know? <laughs> oh my God! Oh, Biden, USA. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I had to start all over. That means I had to get vaccines done. I, I went to my school records. I went to school here since elementary, middle school, high school. I graduated yeah. high school here. So I couldn't find no shot records on me. Um, so I had to go get that done. I had to get the medical records for, you know, the immigration form to be filled out. I had to get evaluation for my dad, medical evaluations. I had to get reference letters. I had to get reference letters from close friends to Talk about who I am as a person. And that, that was the easy part. So, and a lot of people came through for me. Um, people that I didn't expect to but ask if they would. Because me, I'm a person, and everybody know me, I'm a person. It's very hard for me to ask for help. Mm-hmm. Very hard. Mm-hmm. So, if I come to you and I ask. It took a it, lot. It took, and, and those people was willing and willing to help me during that time. When they find out my situation, those people was willing to help me. There's a lot of people. And I could never repay them for what they have done for me. So in that process, in that time, so, and they had to do like affidavit, a whole bunch of stuff. Then when we finally submitted all the documents, I didn't even know how many pages it was until the day of, let me piggyback. When we submitted everything by December 16 of 2022, everything was submitted. And then I received the court date. My original, I had a court date that was sent to me for February 22 of 23. That was my court date. A lot of people knew that court date. I gave the court date out, make sure everybody took the day off. And so throughout that time and preparing, I'm ready. I said, Lord, that's the day because February 22 had marked the year, 21 years since my accident. Wow. So... I said, yes, that's the day I want. That's the day that God gave me. And I'm, I'm going with it. And 
my attorney had prepped me two days prior, which is on Wednesday, for my court date. And then she prepped me, and then I was like, okay, we're ready. And then I got a call. 15 minutes after we got off the call, I got a call. She said, I don't know if it's good news or bad news. And I said, either news is, is news. Which one is it? Yeah. And she was like, um, the judge is sick, mm. and we have to cancel the court date. Wow. My heart dropped because that's not what I want to hear. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> then after that, um, after that, I was supposed to go to an appointment with my dad. My dad had a doctor's appointment and then, um, cause he was not feeling well that week. So, I, you know, just to be following up and whatnot. And then, um, I told the nurse to go ahead and put me on the schedule. I will leave my work. Go to the appointment and just check up on him. So he found out I was heading, I was coming to his appointment. He didn't like that. So he left. So that pissed me off. It pissed me off big time. Then it was just me and I called my dad and I was like, hey, why did you leave the appointment if you know I'm coming? Oh, I didn't know. You didn't tell me. Blase, blase. I didn't want to get to, into more details. It was more on the mm -hmm. exchange. So I hung up, I screamed on the top of my lungs. I screamed, I was the only one in the office, and I said, God, <clears throat> take your time, Take your time. At that time, guys, you see you went through all this. You got you got all the um, vaccines. You put all papers together, affidavit, witnesses, my dad. I did medical exams. I got reports. Everything to prepare for the day that I wanted. And then I got a call saying, the judge is sick. So we're going to cancel. And I said, that's when I, I said to myself, if God, if, if my dad... Could have given me freedom already. He would have gave me freedom. Mm. If the judge, based on everything I provided, if they, if she could have set me free, she would already set me free. That's when I said to God, I surrender it all. I surrender it all. I'm not going to talk about this incident no more. I want this bondage, this chain that is holding me back to be broken. I said, whatever that date is, I want that day to be the day that everything is broken. I don't want that bondage no more. I'm tired of it because I'm giving my all to everybody, everything around me, and I'm still stuck and I'm not able to move. And then that was it. That was it. That, that, that was your breaking point. That was it. Right? And it, it takes a lot when we are going through things to come into that, you know, place where we surrender to God. To God. Because I think sometimes like we try to move needles, right? And God's timing is perfect, right? He doesn't operate on our time, right? And and whenever he does something and whenever we wait on him, man, it is so beautiful, man, to see like when God places the time to deliver you, when he delivers you, you don't have to go say Marge did it, Evie did it, Ooh. you know, you did it. But you could give all glory to God. God did it. God did it. God did. He did. Indeed, he did, man. Okay, oh, is the story not over? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me, I just want to hear the story. Right. Tapin has never been this quiet. Okay. <laughs> So, mind you, did that the first time. <laughs> in it. I'm so, I love this story, man. So, uh, inspiration. His timing. So. Um, I got the, the date. It was so weird. I was in my bed sleeping February, March 26th of 2023. I got a text message from my attorney and said, hey, your court date is April 17th. And I went, so I had to double check the, the, check date. the date and check the message again and make sure. Because normally with immigration, you don't get dates that soon. Mm -hmm. It's like months out or year out. So... Say April 17. And then the funny, the craziest thing ever. 
is when I seen Samuel, I told Samuel the date. I didn't remember April 17th. It's when I, it's not, it isn't, it didn't give me the urge to call people. Hey, my new date was April 17th. It's like, if I'm talking, if I see Sam, I say, hey, Sam, my court date is April 17th. And then I think, then I told somebody else, they say, why so soon? When did you know about it? I said, I just got the date. It's not like something I had planned. Yeah. And then to, even to that, so when I told people, hey, this is the date, don't, you know, I didn't even say don't forget. I just told them the date and that was it. And we had went out um, for Pastor Alex's wife's birthday. And I sat on the table, didn't say nothing to nobody. I didn't bring it up because it was a joyful moment. Even at that time, I felt at peace. As you should. That was Sunday. And then Monday, then Tuesday came the day. Tuesday, I woke up, I looked myself in the mirror, and I said, God, all my mom's prayer that she has in storage in the bank, her mm. bank prayer. I need you to pour all that blessing open today. That. Let's go. Yeah. Open the open flood gate. So and let it rain. When um, so that morning I got up. I was I took a shower, put my makeup on. I don't know who saw me. I put my suit on. Um, but I was not nervous. I had no fear. Mm. All the other times I went, I had fear. I had my like my stomach was tight and knots. Bubbly. Like. Don't know what the next thing. Had a little noodle with. She she walked in like a boss. Had a little noodle with. And this time I didn't feel nervous. I, I was at peace. And then and then to tell you, my dad and everybody know Fresh Tillis. You know he likes. You know he's the the deacon. He's that man. They like, call him Black Santa Claus. I think that's mm -hmm. what you call him. <laughs> Forgot about that day. That's crazy. <laughs> oh. they have him That's crazy. So even him, I didn't tell. I didn't tell him my dad till Saturday. And I said, um, the the attorney says she wants you there, and um, you're gonna go with Matthew. You said I'm not going with you. So no, I'm not going with me. You're going with Matthew. I wanted to be by myself. I wanted just me and God. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. So speak it. Right. So when. When I did that, and normally I when I go to court, when I was going to court back, home, I never eat. I went back to Dunkin' Donuts, got me a coffee, bagel, ate, drove to the courthouse, met with my attorney, and so shout out to Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> we expect we accepting sponsors right now. Yeah. All so, right, Dolly. So it, from there, when I got to the court, of course the attorney was prepping me, and just in case they asked me um, any questions or you know took my testimony or whatnot, she prepared me. When we arrived. When I was arriving um, to the courthouse, um, what brought joy to me is to see that when I look over, I see a line of people was there. And then I'm like, and one of the officers that was checking me, checking us in and said, you guys are here for one person? And they was like, yes. They said, whoever she is, she's blessed. Indeed. Hey, look, don't get it twisted, man. Like, <laughs> look, I really believe this, man. When people show up for you, show up for them. Like, we see in here, we always like to go to weddings, right? It's happy time, right? We always like to, to, to be at parties, yep. right? But when the person is at their tail end, when they are at the deep end, show up for them then because that's when they need you the most. They might not ask for it. And they don't have to. If you are a true friend that's connected with someone, you should know when they are at, at, at their lowest. And when you know that they are at their lowest, show up for them, man. Show up for those who show up for you. Even if they don't show up for you, show so, up anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so um, as I entered the courtroom, we arrived. Um, everybody came in. That they, I think you guys filled the whole row. There was no... We did. They filled the whole row. Um, and then remind you, like I said, these are people that I remember to tell. If I could tell the whole world, I would tell the whole world. But there is a a thing. This thing I want to put out. Let me get to that. So it makes you to understand. Like, even though I had all these people in the courtroom, but God did something that I don't know. If they caught it, but I caught it. Because mm. when we arrived, the attorney, the state attorney. For immigration. I noticed it. This office is, their office is downstairs. Mm -hmm. And we're up on the seventh floor. Did not, it was 106 when the judge realized, okay, where, where's the other party? 
They calling them. They calling them. No answers. No answers. <laughs> Let her tell her story. Right. No He's answers. too excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 the lyrics part. I got the lyrics. He's too excited, man. Yeah, man. So there was no. There was calling. The judge had to have the secretary to contact downstairs and see where they're at. Who they're gonna have it come in to represent the state. So I think you're like 106, 120, 130. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's when that's when one person showed up. He was like, hey. he just rolled out of bed. But this miss, like, <laughs> leave. One thirty is crazy. One thirty, he showed up and he was like trying to connect and trying to figure out what's going on and trying to get to the just there. I hope he was brought up to speed by your 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 colleague on the last time, and then um and you know everything that you guys requested is already been provided. I hope you had time to review it. A hundred, one thousand and ninety-three pages mm. of documents, wow. um, stuff that was presented that I had to submit. And um, he ain't go through all that. So, huh? He ain't go through all that. <laughs> so, um, the judge pretty much said, "Hey, she went. She she went over it. She did her opening. She went over it. And then, of course, then the attorney, the judge, gave the attorney, the state attorney, ten minutes to talk to my attorney." And to come with a decision. And then as she's going, she was like, if you find anything that, you know, would hinder us from not, you know, for us to move forward, please let me know. If you find anything, any reason that say, now, okay, we can't, we should not continue. You need to let me know. She said it three times. And they walked out. So then, of course, you know, after that, I got up and, you know, start talking. And then um, they came back. And then she, my attorney said, we got this. The whole time she said it, I ain't paying no attention to her. I was looking straight at the judge. And then, so once, then they came to the judge said, okay, what are your decision? Based on the previous attorney, we don't find a reason to continue with the case. That is dismissed. And then she said, mm. okay, what about the second part? Based on the previous attorney, the crime of moral turpitude, it does not reflect a reason for deportation. That case is dismissed. The lady looked at me and said, Marlene Dodo, your case is dismissed. Yo! I heard that. I heard that. What? What'd you look at God? What did God? God. God. So from there, from there, um, it was, I put my head down and I cried and what I felt was chains. Break it. Just break it. Amen. Yeah. I felt that all that was coming, all that weight that was on my shoulder, my back, was coming off. And um, to what I was, I want to say to this very end is that Sam has said it already. I'm gonna say God's timing is nobody else's timing but His own. Yep. And He did not want nobody to come and testify. For his daughter. That's oh, right. God. That's right. He did it. That's right. My dad did not go up there and speak. He None of us did. Nobody went up and said a That's word. Right. A one thing about Marlene. And reason why, because I remember, if you guys remember, I said, Lord, I surrender it all. That's right. To you. you did it. And then for me there, it, it shows me that. Because like you, you say, y'all saying it earlier with that people will say, oh, it's because of me that happened. Because of you, that happened. Mm-mm. But it was not nobody. Ain't nobody but, but God. God. But Let's God. go. But Let's God. go. But God. You know, um, <laughs> <laughs> this man here. I want to say something quickly with why I said no, um, he didn't allow nobody. When I came out of jail, when I spent two months and a half in jail and I came, I was in the middle of the midst of some people. And no, my mouth, I, re- I said something and I was reprimanded for that. And then the, the word was to me was, you know, so-and-so is praying for you and you have the, you are able to disrespect that person. I said, that person was not praying for me. Whatever blessing that person was getting, it was not me that was going to give them that blessing. So to go back to say that is that when you're going through your stuff, if you see you're standing alone, yes, you might have a lot of people around you. Yeah. But remember, you're going to be standing, you're going to feel that you're alone in the midst of everything. So you will have to learn how to block the noise. The noise. Mm-hmm. And let him speak. 
So me, I was still letting people, I was still letting the noise come in. Yeah. And that time I had to, that moment, February 22 of 23, I had to let the noise, I had to block the noise mm -hmm. and let God do his work. Do thing. That's right. Man. That's right. So a verse came to mind while you were, me too. you know, testify <laughs> is Romans 8 verse 31. Mm. That says, what then shall we say about these things? If God is for us, Kimun. who is against us? Hallelujah. He who did not withhold his son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? You are God's elect. So whatever charge that was brought to you, God took that. He ate it. And he showed them his power, you know, and that's why I love about your testimony. So I think we come to a good part. Marlene Dodoy. Let them know, bud. Big M. <laughs> the little next, next to the little one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's go. That's -L, man. What is your message to the world, mama? If Next you have something that you want to to give to people what what is that let them know let them know let them know you can speak to this camera right there yeah let them boys know <laughs> let them know what i can say is that remember that you have to trust who god is at all time no matter what you're facing he knows what is best for you and trust that his timing is the best. Yeah. The perfect timing. God's timing is perfect. Yes. With that being said, please go and like, subscribe, please. and leave us a comment below. Yes. All right. Go and uh, follow us in all social media platforms. We are on IG, Facebook. Thank you, you can, Marlene. Yeah. You know, you can send us an email and all that. <laughs> Uh, so before we go out, Mama, um, I want to thank you for allowing this platform for sure. uh, to yes. share your testimony. I really believe that this will help somebody that might be facing the very same thing that you went through, except she already went through the test. You already have the answers. Because yeah. okay? if he could do it for you, he could he do it do for it you for too. Exactly. <laughs> Until next time, go ahead and tap, 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 tap in. In. Let's go. Yeah.